They'll top that by a large margin today. Gino Oriyama, the outstanding 13-year coach from UConn, has a national title in his background. He'll start Stacy Hensmeyer, Amy Duran, Paige Sauer will be in the middle with Rita Williams running the show. And Nikisha Sales will also see some time at the point as well as at the swing. Five national titles for that lady, Pat Summit. What a remarkable career she has had. 14-0 coming into this game. And you see the lineup, the aforementioned Holtzclaw, Tamika Catchings, LaShonda Stevens trying to get the job done in the middle with Kelly Jolly and Kyra Elsey in the backcourt. It's a lot of perimeter quickness right now for Tennessee on the with that guard lineup. The last meeting, of course, coming in the Elite Eight and in talking with Gino Ariyama, he says, you know, we just want to make sure we're not in the same region with this team when the NCAA tournament begins. Sally Bell, Patty Broderick, and John Morningstar, the officials for this afternoon's game. Always a highly anticipated matchup, and we are underway in Knoxville. Don't be surprised to see both teams come out in man-to-man -man defense. That's their specialty. LZ can't get it to fall. Catching gets contact underneath. Always, when you have somebody that's penetrating to the basket in a man-to-man -man defense, it makes you rotate, and that's what allowed Tamika Catchings to be active on the offensive glass. What a story she is. A freshman from Duncanville, Texas. Her sister Taja plays at Illinois for Teresa Grants. You'll be able to see her tomorrow on CBS Sports, a part of our women's college. Of course, uh, Father Harvey Catchings played for years with Milwaukee and Philadelphia, now a radio broadcaster for the Chicago Bulls. Numbers already. Hansmeyer. Can't hit. Catchings clears. We are playing a four-quarter system. Ten minutes. Inside as well as in women's basketball this year. And in a non-conference matchup, we have the quarter system for this game. Four 30-second timeouts available to each coach. And the three of those timeouts can be carried over to the second half. One of the key matchups for Tennessee right now is Shamiqua Holtzclaw going against Nakisha Sales. What a great matchup, but she's going to have to get help on the screens. She finally got the baseline, but was rejected. And they have had a number of those this year. LaShonda Stevens got a hand on that one. It's almost like Tennessee has four guards because anybody can bring it up and anybody can shoot it in transition. Stevens on the other end sets the pick. Allowing Kyra Elsey the deuce, and it's 4 nothing, Lady Balls. Both teams are high scoring. Tennessee averages 87 points a game. UConn averages 80 points a game. Off the ball. Foul spotted by Patty Broderick. Offensive foul, it appears. We'll go back to Tennessee. Well, UConn sets so many blind screens to try and get Nikisha, Sa uh, Nikisha Sales open, and that time, one of the UConn players stepped up and it was a moving screen. Uh, Hansmeyer, Stacy Hansmeyer whistled with her first foul. Catchings. That is a... That is a two-pointer. She was just inside the arc. So it's 6 nothing. It's so hard to coach that type of talent. She's 56% from the field. And an air ball delivered by Sales. Gino Ariyama told me prior to the start of the game that he felt that he needed a good start for his club. They've been inconsistent down low. They, they've relied so heavily on their perimeter game. He needed some baskets to fall early. Catchings is on fire. She's hit now two perimeter jumpers. That one's a three. And Oriyama gets the quick timeout. Nine unanswered points for the Lady Balls.
Watch Kelly Jolly run the Tennessee offense. This is a triple post. This is Holtzclaw. She's going to go to the basket. The player who catches the ball right here, that is catching. If you don't step up on her and you sag in on Holtzclaw, she is going to say, I shoot 56% from the field, and now we get a nine-point lead. Catchings with seven of Tennessee's nine. On the other end, Hansmeyer takes it to the rack and gets the... Uh, the foul that'll go against uh, Tamika Catchings who that's her first mistake she is off to a magnificent start well Timmy Catchings has a somewhat of a problem getting into foul trouble because she's so overly aggressive and she has so much physical ability but she has to temper her emotion especially early in the game well we touched on her sister Taja, Tamika's sister, Taja, and she does play for Illinois. She stayed with her father, Harvey, when uh, the parents broke up, and Tamika went on to Duncanville, Texas, and uh, they had always thought they'd play on the same team. Now there's a rivalry brewing. The two have played one another, Tennessee winning by 10. Well, there was a rivalry when they were kids. It never stopped. In this, uh, matter of fact, it was Harvey who had to stop them from killing each other. <laughs> Loose ball run down by Elsie. Well, I really appreciates the effort in that sequence. It's typical Tennessee, the aggression level. That's what they come out with every game. Second chance points. We're seeing it really come to the forefront, Nancy. Kyra Elsey. It's as if they're on a pogo stick getting second and third opportunities on the offensive glass. Well, although you're seeing right now that UConn is trying to play good defense, Elsie, Holtzclaw, Catchings are so active on the offensive glass. I don't think the Huskies have the perimeter quickness to box them out. Even if you're doing the fundamental thing, they're just so quick and so active. Hansmeyer leaves, and uh, Svetlana Abrasimova has come into the game for the first time. Abrasimova out of, out of uh, St. Petersburg, Russia, getting a lot of playing time. In fact, has started a couple of times this year, averaging just under 13 a game. And she's their second leading scorer. She comes off the bench kind of like Shea Ralph would have had she not been injured to give him that spark. Elsie has been very active defensively along the perimeter. She kicked that one, so a fresh 30 seconds for Pat Summit and their defensive team. UConn looking to scratch for the first time, and they're being soundly whipped on the board. Look at that, 8-1 to one for Tennessee, and of course, uh, four points off of those for the Volunteers. So, second-chance points, good for almost half of their allotment. Nice running one-hander by Rita Williams. Rita Williams has to be a catalyst in this game with her speed and quickness. She leads the Big East in steals, but she has to get it done in the defense of Tennessee. UConn into the scoring column after three and a half minutes in the first quarter. Jolly off the front iron. Again, Tennessee active on the offensive glass. Last touch by UConn. Tamika Catchings trying to save it and give her team another opportunity. Check out Rita Williams here taking Kelly Jolly off the dribble. She's taking her to the left, and she's saying, at least if I can get into your defense, I can break you down. And a push-off spotted against uh, Stevens. LaShonda Stevens picking up that foul. That's her first. Paige Sauer is fouled inside the lane. That's probably not the foul that Tennessee wants because Paige Sauer at six foot five, let her take the high post shot. Just contest it, but you don't want to foul her out there. Paige, a sophomore from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Timmy, there's also a lot of recruiting battles that have been fought and won by both teams. Paige Sauer was one of those players that UConn got from Tennessee. It, was, it came down to both of those schools. And then Samika Randall, who just checks in the game for Tennessee, it came down to Tennessee or UConn. So I guess they're one and one now. Well, the, the talk around the, the country is that uh, Tennessee's tremendous meets and all of the outstanding freshmen that they have will only be matched by the group that Gino Oriyama already has committed 
coming in next season. Uh, the five players he has coming in are pretty unbelievable. And it's the kid, Sue Bird, who's at Christ the King. That's where Shamiqua Holtzclaw went to school. She's supposed to be the, bench, uh, the best of the bunch. Randall looking inside to Stevens. That shot's been there. She can't hit it. And the foul. Samika Randall. Freshman from Cleveland, played at Trinity High School. Gives Tennessee a 12-3 lead. Well, it's like you take one Meek out or one player out of the game in Elsie, and you bring in a more aggressive player in Randall for Tennessee. Sauer gets the hoop as well as harm. So an opportunity for a three-point play the old-fashioned way coming up. UConn's picking up the foul. UConn trying to get something going on the inside, and they're trying. They have to use their height. They have the advantage on the inside. Right there, that is great boxing out right there by Amy Duran. But somebody has to box out Samika Randall on the weak side. See, it doesn't matter if one or two box out and the other three don't. You got some serious problems. Well, uh, and as you see, Gino Oriyama talking with his star, Nikisha Sears, they've got to find a way to get her involved. I mean, she's thrown up an air ball and a brick that failed to hit the iron, and uh, you begin to wonder about her frustration not being able to get the basketball on the offensive end. Nice trap by UConn. Catchings comes away with it, and a turnover. That's more intensity on the defensive end in that sequence than we've seen from UConn to this point. Well, they need to pick it up. Nikisha Sales has to play tough defense, get out in the passing lanes. You know you're going to get that from Rita Williams. Now Tennessee with more shots on goal, to borrow a hockey phrase, and that's really been the key. Sowers rejected. That was all ball. Now a steal. Rita Williams answers, so a turnover rare by Tennessee, leading to a bucket. Rita Williams now has four of UConn's eight. Well, you just saw what players do well. Teresa Jeter, the freshman, comes off the bench. She leads the SEC in blocks. She blocks that inside shot, but then Rita Williams steals it back, and she leads the Big East in steals. Teresa Jeter, they nicknamed her the tree. She's in the game, number 40 in white. Jolly can't hit. And over the back, catchings again in great position, bringing about that foul from Abrasimova. Right here, look at the steal. Rita Williams stealing the ball on the way up. If you're a thief in this game, that's what you want to do when the ball is on its way up off the dribble is when you steal it, and she is very good at that. Off the inbounds, Randall connects. Samika Randall now has four, and it's a 14 to eight. Lady Volunteer Cushion, 3.55 and counting in the opening quarter, along with Nancy Lieberman, Klein, Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us. We're at Thompson Bowling Arena, Knoxville, Tennessee. See a lot of trapping by Tennessee right here. If you pick up the ball, they're in the passing lanes. Shot clock winding down, and Duran buries one. A three-pointer, and it's 14 to 11. That's the first tray for the Huskies. Well, UConn shoots about 41% from three, so if you have read the scouting report, you know you got to get on Duran. UConn gets it back. North Carolina trailing early in men's basketball today. Jim Calhoun's club off to a pretty good start. Nikisha Sales coming out of the game, and... Uh, no doubt, probably a, an opportunity for her and for Gino Oriana to get a chance to see how they can free her up. Another steal. Catchings delivers. Oh, offensive foul. Wave it off. Samika Randall on the receiving end of that pass from Catchings. And that's really not Randall's fault because it's Catchings who has the ball. See right here the great steal by Tamika Catchings. She's got to make Rita Williams come to her and not get back in time. That's the responsibility of the passer. So a player control foul on Randall. UConn will have it underneath their own hoop. Look at the energy Randall's come in and brought to the game. She was calling Pat Summit last year when she was watching them lose early in the season, saying, Coach, when I come here, can we pick up full court? I mean, Pat was like, yeah, <laughs> of course we can. <laughs> Sour. Oh, that's a nice play. But great entry pass by Abrasimova. Sauer kept the ball high. 
14-13. But UConn trailed at one point, nine nothing, a couple of minutes deep. Yeah, but they're a smart team, UConn, and they're not going to let an early score get them down. They're just going to play their style of ball. Their first basket actually came when they were trailing 10 nothing. Jeter trying to keep it alive, touched it last. 2.28 remaining. Huskies are going to hang around in Tennessee, aren't they? <laughs> Connecticut's cut the Tennessee lead to one point because they're getting it done on offense. Look at this great defense right here by Teresa Jeter. Tennessee playing just super. And Abrasimova, beautiful lead pass to 6'5", Paige Sawyer. Sauer, who's showing her with the inside hand where I want the ball. Look at that. Uh, they've now outscored Tennessee 13-4 to in the last 425. Tennessee has five steals in this game, Nancy, but only four points off of that. And you can count it and a foul. Oh, she can dance too, Tim. Oh, Samika. She's got that upper body yeah. movement. She told me it's too hot to handle Randall. That's the calling name for the freshman from Cleveland, Ohio, Trinity High School. There you go. We can get her on Soul Train. I know it. <laughs> Rita Williams picked up that foul. And now, Randall has seven points. 17-13, Lady Vols. I guarantee you that when Randall and Elsie are in the game, you're going to see a lot of full court man to man, a lot of trapping from Tennessee out of their defense. Well, Nikisha Searles now moving to the point. That's one way of getting her more involved. That pass is clearly picked. Sixth turnover by UConn. Shamiqua Holtzclaw using the window. Beautiful defense anticipation right there by Holtzclaw. And look at her off the dribble. I mean, that Sauer is six foot five, and she moved the ball from the right side to the left side in a little hang time. Sauer will get a break. So Tennessee gets the ball, leading by six with 155 to play in the first quarter. And a push. Rita Williams picking up the foul, her second, team seventh. Team in the two games that these teams played last year. First game, Tennessee loses at the Civic Center in Hartford in front of a sellout crowd. It was unbelievable. And UConn wins 72-57. Tennessee goes to the line 11 times. Abrasimova gets her first deuce. In the game that they won in the Midwest region, they went to the foul line 37 times. So that's very telltale for Tennessee to get to the line. There's the ball pressure from UConn. They're now forcing some turnovers with their half-court defense, Nancy. They're very good in the half-court. They have active hands and they have good athletes. Now an overplay from Tennessee. Williams. Little stutter step. Leans right into Jeter and the tree, as she's awfully nicknamed, puts it back in her face. Holds claw off the dribble. Elsie follows. You can see Kyra Elsie just getting inside position. She knew that Holt's claw was going to pull the trigger. And the lead back to six. Just that quickly, Nakisha Sales gets involved and finally has a basket. And we're in the last minute now of the first quarter. So it took practically an entire quarter for Nikisha Sales to get into the scoring column. Well, and she did. And you know what I like about now, this four-quarter type of game we have? You can give the ball to a Holtz Club or a Sales and let them try and score and use the clock at the end. Holtz Claw with her ability to post up, and in that case, a jump stop and a deuce. And the lead that was down to one is back up to six with 20.7 remaining in the opening quarter in Knoxville. 23-17, Tim Brando along with Nancy Lieberman Klein. It's interesting, these teams, you look at it, Connecticut's won four of the last uh, six matchups, but 
Pat Summit's team has won the most important of those matchups, and in many respects, these two teams realize that in order to, to win it all, you're likely to have to play one another again. Well, she even proved that last year at Tennessee, Pat Summit. It doesn't matter how many losses you have going into the tournament. You just have to get hot, and they did it. Yeah, they had 10 losses and then made their run. But uh, you see this uh, young talent that's come in to take over for some of the great names that made that run last season. The thing about Tennessee with the freshmen is there, there are no really uh, levels of classification when you have the skill to step up and play. After a 10-0 spurt to open this game, UConn challenged to draw to within one, but right now the defending national champions, top-ranked Tennessee leads by six at the end of one quarter. Better than 20,000 on hand, number one versus number three. No Orange Bowl hangover in the state of Tennessee. Not when you have a two-time defending national champion women's basketball team, and uh, Pat Summit is known not only for having great talent, but also making other teams adjust to constantly changing defenses. And for the most part, Nancy, at least in the first quarter, both teams have been very vanilla, haven't they? Well, I think so. It's only January 7th, and you don't want to put everything out for everybody else to see. I mean, this is a national game, yeah. and everybody's got their VCRs on, I'm sure. It's a game that whether Tennessee or UConn wins, it's not going to change their programs at all. And they just want to find out where they need to be come March. Kristen Ace Clement picks up that foul off the ball. She was trying to post up. Ace Clement, one of the four highly touted freshman class along with Jeter, Randall, and Catchings. And uh, now in the bonus, Connecticut will shoot. Stacy Hansmeyer at the line. Catchings has had a remarkable first 10 minutes. Well, she's tough to guard. She's big enough at six foot one where she can post you on the inside, and she's quick enough that you can't guard her on the perimeter. And there's a nice pass to Elgin. So she started all of that, and you can see they, they now can afford to give Shamiqua Holtzclaw five or six minutes rest and just allow catchings to take over. Oh, there's so many of them that can take over, but you're right, it gives Holtzclaw a chance to get a blow. But Tennessee runs that triple post offense so efficiently. Run down by Clement. Another turnover by UConn, and the lead is eight for the Lady Vols. Now, Tim, the Bulls have been fairly successful with this crazy thing called the triple post offense, and Pat Summit and her coaches, Mickey DeMoss, Al Brown, Holly Warwick, have made some trips to Chicago to visit with Phil Jackson, Tex Winters, and those guys. Tex Winter, the uh, author of the triple post, a legendary collegiate coach at Kansas State, Long Beach State, and uh, actually was an assistant coach uh, at LSU at one time before going to Chicago. You're sounding like you went to school with Tex. <laughs> I know that's not the spent a lot of Spent a lot of time with Tex Winter talking basketball through the years. But that's the thing that I like about Gino. They run some of the triple posts as well, but with Pat in this instance is that she's been so successful. But when UConn was beating her in two and three games in a row, she wanted to figure out not only how did these teams beat me, but how can I incorporate that into my offense and learn how to defend it? Kelly Schumacher is coming to the game now for UConn. And Elsie getting a blow for Tennessee. Well, they wanted to spot up, but could not come up with the handle. Locked down to one, and we've got a violation. 30-second violation by Tennessee. That's the ninth turnover committed by the Lady Vols. But the, the up and down pace of this game, one would expect that. UConn's been uh, sitting on 17 for some time. See, this is the third defender for Tennessee to go against Nikisa Sales. And there's another one of those turnovers that comes with... Uh, the high anxiety of the pace of the game. Now, 
You can get all of your college hoops action at cbs.sportsline.com. You'll find the latest sports stat standings, even player interviews, chat with other fans, and check out our in-depth columns. Get in on the action at keyword cbs.sportsline on America Online. Tim, I would do it, but I'm working today. <laughs> I'm busy. Duran with a little give and go. Can't connect. Those are the shots that UConn has to put down anytime they can get in the interior of the defense. They've got to finish. Jeter was trying to set up a pick and roll. Hope that one away. Jeter misses one guinea. Helps the next one. And the foul. They make it look so easy because they're so active around the glass. Good things happen to you when you're persistent. Right here, Jeter says, hey, thanks. Well, I've had my offensive rebounding stats, and I'm going to finish right there. UConn has not scored since 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. This drought now is measuring almost five minutes. Gino RM, you got a chance to take a look at him. Came from Virginia, an assistant coach with Debbie Ryan there. They went to the Final Four. He was one of the best recruiters that I've ever seen. And now what he's done in a short period of time, relatively speaking, with the UConn program is just fabulous. What she's been doing is not so bad either. Catchings on both ends of the floor, Nancy. She has been the uh, the real energy of the Tennessee effort here in the first half. Well, Tennessee has always used their defense as a catalyst for their offense, but now they have players that can play for 40 minutes on both sides. The lead is back to 11. They try to force it in, and again, it's catchings on the overplay. Keisha Sales comes away with it, looking for some redemption. It's great transition defense that time by Tennessee. Sales had it in the open court. I thought she was going to take catches one-on-one. -on -one. Moda can't hit. Save to Amy Duran, who dumps it down. That's a two-pointer inside the arc and ends a very long UConn drought. Better than five minutes. Amy Duran, one of the three juniors on the team that Gina Oriama was counting on to step up and give him some offense, and she's done that early on in the game. Catchings. Good delivery to Hulk. You talk about the total package. Oh, it's amazing. She can pass, she can shoot. What a great compliment to Shamiqua Holtzclaw is catchings. Shamiqua has only six points. And really, she's gotten so much help from Catchings and Kyra Elsey. Now you see her on the defensive end with a near pick. This is really hard to believe. It's 30 to 19 Lady Balls. Tennessee's out-rebounded UConn 20 to 4. Watch this. When you get by one line of defense right there, all Holtzclaw then does is just make a beeline to the basket. And Catchings is such a great passer. She can find her. Uh, Brown right there, the assistant coach of Tennessee, giving the encouragement to Catchings. Outstanding staff, both Gino Oriama and Pat Summit have. Timeout, 6-10 remaining in the half. You look at our game summary, and the bottom line becomes too much board work, but then UConn hanging in because they've been able to create some turnovers. They've been outscored in second-chance points by a whopping 12-4 to margin. Well, it's not a surprise because Tennessee is so active on the offensive glass, and what they do with their defense is simply incredible. They put so much pressure on you. You can't even run your offense, much less think about what you're going to do with the ball. Fun environment, though, isn't it? Well, you mentioned about the perimeter quickness of Tennessee. They're so quick, they don't even call it perimeter. It's just perimeter. Per slows them down. There's another example. Holt's claw. Well, so well. She has eight in the game. And the lead back to 13. And another turnover. Nice pass to Jeter. The credit. Get your VCRs turned on. Right now. 
Tennessee hasn't stopped stealing balls with their defense. Watch this here on the flight of the ball. Shamika holds claw. See, she's just setting up Swetvana Abrazama right there. She goes and kind of moves the ball. See, watch her following the ball right there. That's great transition defense. Turn around, follow the ball. And Tennessee just making it happen. Boom, Jeter running the floor. At six foot three, Jeter can flat get up and down the court. Tremendous vision. And remember, the strength of this UConn team coming in was its perimeter play. And then they've really been outdueled during the second quarter. The run is up to 13 2. What a dangerous combination for a team, a good dangerous combination. Abrasimova now has four in the game to finally break the ice, and it's 34 to 21. Great teams have great passers. Tennessee, to run their triple post offense, which they run about 50% of the time, you have to have good passers, and they do. Tie ball. The arrow is to UConn. So they will have it as Hansmeyer prepares to come into the game. Tomorrow, skill and athleticism. Anytime you have a dead ball situation, count on Tennessee running their crowd. Another rejection. This time it was Stevens that started it. On the other end, she saves it. Remarkable play to Holtz Claw. And another foul. This one against Sauer. Hey, how about LaShonda Stevens with a rejection and then baseline to baseline, Nancy, making the save to Shamiqua Holtzclaw. That's six foot three of a woman going up and down that floor and saving the ball to her teammate. Usually Jeter and Stevens are kind of like a two-headed center. They give you about 11 points and about nine rebounds a game. They've got to be having a blast playing together. Well, when you think about LaShonda Stevens as a complimentary sophomore in the middle, that team last year that made that run with names like Abby Conklin, Passion Thompson, Tiffany Johnson, she's really stepping into a complimentary role that uh, was overlooked by many last year, and those three players come to my mind. Well, the thing about a basketball team is you're going to have your stars, you're going to have your support players, and then you're just going to have the role player that's a specialist, and that's what LaShonda Stevens is. And Stevens picks up that foul against Abrasimova. Very impressed with uh, her play offensively, and uh, like so many uh, European players, she's uh, becoming more accustomed with each passing game to the speed and quickness that's found in the women's game in the United States. Well, I had a chance to talk to her in practice yesterday, and just a lovely, lovely young lady, and I said, so how did you hear about UConn? And she said that she had always wanted to play basketball in the United States, and a, a friend of Gino's coaches in Russia, and they kind of talked about it, and tapes were sent back and forth, and voila, I'm in stores. She's already been Big East Rookie of the Week twice. That's why they call us that the threat. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think they made that up in Russia. <laughs> Catchings, leans in, gets the contact. Nikisha Sales picks up the foul, her first. Nikisha Sales has to have some touches on the offensive end. She really has been a non-factor right now. They either have to run some isolations for her, maybe start her out at the point guard spot within their offense, but she's got to get her hands on the ball. Gino Ariana making his point right now to John Morningstar up at the top of your screen that he believes uh, perhaps a, a little more than natural contact taking place when she's off the ball. Frankly, other than off the dribble, she's been a non-factor. Only time she scored has been when she's handled it, and you see she's doing that right now. Well, you mentioned physical play. The SEC is one of the most physical conferences in women's basketball. Now, the debate may have helped Gino. There was contact earlier with no whistle. And now a reach-in foul against uh, Teresa Jeter. Now you can bet uh, Pat Summit not to be outdone. We'll get her licks in. Well, I know they were having dinner at Pat's house last night. She was doing the cooking. Her mom, Hazel, is out there cooking, as well as Billy Moore, her friend and mentor, who was a, a, the Olympic coach in 1976. And the kids were watching the Tennessee-Nebraska game. And I think this is maybe a little bit payback. And 
Meyer. Jeter has four rebounds in this game, a couple of blocks. Those ball lost to dribble. Out of bounds to Tennessee. If you want to start a fast break, watch Teresa Jeter, the freshman right here. She snags a rebound, boom, before the defense can even set up, that ball is out of her hands. Three best outlet passes in men's basketball. I can remember Wes Unsell mm -hmm. having a great outlet pass. Jabbar had a great outlet pass. That is what keys your fast breaks. Wes Unsell, that goes back a long yeah, it time. Does. And he was only about six foot uh, seven when he played for the Baltimore uh, Bullets. And by the way, I'm not going to mention Russell. I, I, I remember Russell, <laughs> but I'm not going to admit it. Oh, that's right. Bill Russell is the third. Here's Nikisha Sales. Little stutter step. And an offensive foul. And she really was baited that time by catchings. Well, I think so. What's a little inside out? move right there but she guessed right yes she did things not going to Keisha Sales way in the first half only four points for her and her team down by 14 oh, this, that's a bad pass that time Holtz Clark was thinking that her teammate was going to roll to the basket catchings long rebound taken down by Rita Williams Traffic and when Tennessee gets the frenetic pace going, they usually win out. Tennessee, Timmy, has always been a percentage basketball team. Let's pound it inside. Let's make sure we go inside to out. This is new stuff for Pat Summit and for the Lady Balls. Well, sales gets a hoop there, but you almost get the feeling that uh, the pace of the game is such that even a basket for UConn is fool's gold. Well, they're not getting it within their offense. Tennessee has not only gotten it off steals and off offensive rebounds, but they actually have run their offense. Catchings. Falling down with that uh, very unique shot of hers. 50% for Connecticut. Incredible shooting for Tennessee, considering the way the game's going. And another foul of this one against Abrasimova. 2-11 remaining until halftime. And the lead is up to 17. 42-25 Tennessee, and uh, we've reached a, uh, a new era in women's college basketball. There are actually scouts on hand. Isn't that a great sign? Renee Brown, the director of player personnel for the WNBA to the right. Jim Lewis, the new coach of the Washington Mystics of the WNBA on hand to watch the proceedings. Well, they're saying a lot of talent right now. Detroit, the new expansion team along with Washington in the league. Also, Tracy Williams from the ABL is here. Uh, Nell Fortner, the Olympic coach is here. Everybody's here to watch great basketball. bit of talk about will some of the women players jump and go early because salaries are certainly escalating in the WNBA and also in the ABL and it's going to happen at some point in time. I mean if you think it's not going to happen you're really fooling yourself but I would think until the money got fairly substantial that you would stay in school get your education uh, but the day is about to arrive for women's basketball. Out of bounds it will be controlled to UConn. Coming up at halftime, the early rising Michelle Tafoya will update you on scores and highlights. We'll take a look at Stanford's two-sport star, Christian Vogel, as she tries to lead Stanford to the national championship. That's with Michelle Tafoya back from Miami and in the digs in New York at halftime. Sales trying to come away with a steal, finally comes away with it. See, that's great defense right there by UConn. They're trying to turn it on, even though they're down right now. And this is a tough building to win in. Tennessee's won 98 of their last 101 games here. Sales rejected. Jeter again. And a tie ball with the arrow to Tennessee. Boy, the tree, as she's been nicknamed. Is tall. Yeah. Freshman out of Columbia, South Carolina. Just watch this right here. You make somebody commit, and then you have somebody like Tree who bails you out. 
I have to talk about a player like that. Ann Donovan, when I played in college, we used to be able to cheat on defense. Annie Donovan, a three-time Olympian, was 6'8". She bailed you out so many times blocking shots, and you can actually cheat and try for things. You could be risky defensively. Well, now you see the open floor ability of the Nikisha Sells. Not finding Rita Williams there on that play. That was a turnover. Well, it's the three seniors for UConn that must turn it up in the second half, and that's Sale, and that's Williams, two of the three. The other one is Hunt, Kelly Hunt, the 6'2 senior. Clement, who's got a nice outside shot, can't hit right now. Williams, a little stutter step. Knocked away by Tennessee. Fans don't agree, but UConn will have it underneath their own hoop with a one-second discrepancy between the shot clock and the game clock. Here in the half. Tim, the game changed against UConn when Paige Sauer went out of the game in foul trouble. They were at least able to work the ball inside to her offensively. Jeter picks up that foul, her second. Team foul number 10. So we're into the double bonus for Kelly Schumacher. This young lady's out of Canada, in fact, was the Canadian player of the year. because it's a program that everybody wants to be a part of. I mean, you see the recruits all over the country. It usually comes down to a stand for the UConn of Georgia, teams like that. Well, we've reached a stage in college basketball where you see, uh, for instance, Georgia, and you and I will see uh, tomorrow in a game that many of you will see here on CBS. They've been able to go into the Midwest, into Minnesota, and get uh, a pair of uh, twins that are outstanding. Oh, uh, Coco and Kelly Miller are unbelievable. Just what they've done in their freshman season, shooting, rebounding. I mean, they lead the team in virtually every category. We've come to halftime, and how entertaining. Just listen to this sellout crowd. They turned away 800 people outside Thompson Bowling. That's the end of the half. Volunteers lead it 42-28. We'll return to Thompson Bowling Arena after this message and a word from your local CBS stations. It very easily could be a record crowd, better than 24,000 on hand for the Women's Basketball Classic presented by Honda. And they've seen their beloved lady volunteers, the defending national champions, get to a 14-point cushion at halftime, along with Nancy Lieberman Klein, Tim Brando. Well, you've heard so much about the Meeks, uh, Shamiqua Holtzclaw, obviously the leader of this Tennessee team, but uh, Catchings has uh, has been delivering in more ways than one. Uh, Tamika Catchings has been simply amazing what she's done in the first half. She's dominated on both ends, but watch here. If you're not going to come out on her, she's going to shoot the three. She does that at about 55% during the season. This time, again, all she does is she fakes inside and steps back behind the three, and she hits this one again. This is what opens up the inside for Tennessee. And you can take a look at the statistics right here. The glaring one right here, the rebounding. Tennessee has as many offensive rebounds as UConn has rebounds. We should point out also that Without Shea Ralph available, the sophomore from Fayetteville, North Carolina, Gino Oriama has just not had the kind of options along the perimeter. I've gotten the feeling, particularly with the steals that Postclaw and Catchings have come away with, it's been a question of quickness or lack thereof, and not having Shea Ralph has really hurt Gino's team. Well, she was one of the best freshmen in the country last year, and when you lose her to the ACL the second time she's had it, she was a national freshman of the year, She's going to see Dr. Andrews down in Alabama on the 12th, so hopefully Gino can get her back. Can you imagine having her and then having Swetlana Abrojimova together on the court? I think it would be a fantastic combination. There's a Shea, and it's still debatable as to whether she'll redshirt this year or not. Uh, a lot, I think, would be determined with how the team's going and where their standing is along the month of February. Chances are they're very much in it, and she could indeed play. Dr. James Andrews, a noted surgeon in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, try to help out. Paige Sauer gets the first deuce of the second half, and it's 42 to 30, Lady Bob. So Paige Sauer was in foul trouble, only played nine minutes, but they were productive minutes because she had six points, and she was part of that offense 
You condemn him. Marlene by Shamikra Holzklaw. She has a dozen now, and it's 44 to 30. Just to update you on the Meek situation, they had 28 points, 13 rebounds at the half. Good passing as Amy Duran gets the deuce. She has seven as they trade baskets in the first minute of the third quarter. Get a reminder, we have the quarter system, the experiment that you've uh, seen in both men's and women's basketball in this intersectional matchup today. LZ rejected by Sauer. You have to give both of the, cred uh, the coaches a lot of credit because they probably could have said, we don't want to do this quarter system. This is too big a game for us, but they were both willing to work with the experiment in college basketball. Duran picking up the foul. Her second first team foul. I don't know about you, but I've seen a number of men's games this year, I've, I've found that the game's actually a little longer with the quarter system. I think it makes it a lot longer and it slows it down. But if, uh, if you don't try, you never find out. Clement has that one picked up. Or Rita Williams going to the off hand, finding hands mine. Nice choice. She draws the contact and we'll get to the line. And I'm sure with the, fresh, the freshman, Ace Clement, in the game, Pat Summit wanted her to take care of the basketball. Tough situation. You kind of rest Kelly Jolly a little bit, who's your starting guard. Certainly, Ace Clement will be the future guard, point guard for Tennessee. But see, that, that's the mentorship right there. She's not yelling at her. She's just, she's teaching. And that's what Pat and, and a coach like Gino Oriama, that's what they do best. They teach. Hansmeyer got the first free throw, one of four. That was uh, her first make of the day. Now she hits two in a row. Well, Hansmeyer's going to have to get involved in the game. She didn't have any points at halftime, and she averages 10 on the season. Connecticut coming out with some full court pressure, easily handled by Elsie and Holzclaw. Clement off the fire, gets her own rebound. Rashawn to Stevens can't connect. Now takes it right away from Sauer. Just too much effort, Nancy. Exactly what you talked about at halftime. It's the perimeter quickness. I don't know how many times you have to say something like this, but Tennessee is just so fluid on the perimeter that even if you box somebody out, you have to hold your box out a little longer because the Tennessee players spin off of you. LZ, player control foul against Kyra. Her second. Rita Williams with a good position. Though she did apparently pay a price for it. What? Look, look how quick right there Rita Williams is. She came all the way from the weak side, but when she fell, she fell on Paige Sauer, and she was holding her wrist. Lakeisha Sales trying to beat the pressure. Sauer from the top, and she's got excellent touch. She now has 10 points in the game. Coming into today's game, averaging nine points and just under five rebounds. And a timeout by Tennessee. And I guarantee you that's what Gino said in the timeout. Let's make sure we execute offensively and get the ball inside to Paige. Paige Sauer. At the 1996 Final Four, Rebecca Lobo wondered if the Huskies could win a title without her. When Nikesha Sales sent the game into overtime, UConn's hopes were still alive, but Tennessee's Michelle Marciniak avenged their loss to UConn. Look at this right here. Off the dribble, she got it done to avenge that loss to UConn in the 95 title game on their way to the 96 National Championship in Charlotte. One of five that Tennessee proudly displays in Thompson Bowling Arena. But no one's ever won three. You're know, winning it twice. That's what. But this team is driven and motivated to have an opportunity at winning three consecutive national titles. Great look from Holtzlaw to Tamika Catchings. The only thing Ketchings didn't do was dunk it, but that is just a beautiful play executed out of the timeout. Coaches love that stuff. Prior to that, Tennessee had only scored two points in the last 450. So UConn's defensive pressure has improved here in the second half. Come out of the timeout. Coaches want you to be intense. And this time, there's a nice up screen that allowed Catchings to go for the lob. Knocked away. 
by Samika Randall. Hey, do you know where Emma hasn't gotten to where he is to have 300 victories in his 13th year by just sitting around and thinking, well, we gave our best effort here in Knoxville. He told his kids in the locker room, get out there and compete. Hansmeyer off the feed from Sales. Oh, North Carolina struggling with Crimson as you look at some of the scores from around the country in men's play. Crimson team got off to a disappointing start, but when you uh, begin league play, that's that's what's happening for the most part across the country, both in women's and men's play. You begin to play your neighbors, it gets a little tougher. It gets a lot tough because there's not an offense or defense you have that hasn't been scouted about 18 different ways. In many respects, though, these teams have only played seven times counting today. Uh, in the last few years, it's almost been like a conference game. Well, when you haven't played somebody a lot, you don't know people's tendencies. And that's where gray area comes in. But when you play somebody a lot, you're comfortable with what they do. She's comfortable with a standstill jumper, but Akisha can't hit that, that one. And the score remains 46 to 38. Four minutes gone by here in the third quarter. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA women's basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local CBS station. In the suit, and now's the time. Not at the mall, but across the street at American Clothing. Buy one suit or sport coat and get another of these. Volunteer TV. Tennessee's 14-point halftime lead down to eight. With the conclusion of our game, we'll select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost six and a half million dollars to scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. With Nancy Lieberman, Klein, Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. Better than 24,000 on hand at Thompson Bowling Arena. Number one, Tennessee. Number three, Connecticut. And the 18th turnover of the afternoon committed by Tennessee. If you're going to turn the ball that, over that many times, it's going to allow a team as good as Connecticut to hang around and get their confidence back. UConn has only been down twice this year at the half. That was to Iowa and to Stanford. And they came back and won those basketball games. Catchings deflected that shot by Sauer. And now another steal. Abra Smova started it. And now Randall reaches in on Rita Williams. Uh, the hands of Svetlana Rossimova coming into play there. You can see that uh, she's much quicker once you've seen her on the floor for a few minutes. Uh, she's so smooth, makes it look effortless at times. Well, Abrasimova certainly doesn't play like a freshman. She comes off the bench. You mentioned earlier about 13 points a game. She could probably start on any other team in the country, but she has very good foot speed. A lot of bumping going on, much to the chagrin of Oriana. Rita Williams gets the roll. Basket will count. And a foul underneath. That's a smart play by Rita Williams as Gino is not happy with the call. Right here, Randall's playing good defense, and when Rita Williams backs her off with the little forearm, hey, you gotta pull the trigger. Rita Williams spent her whole sophomore year trying to be Jen Rosati. And you know what? There's not very many Jen Rosati's in this country. She's a special player. But UConn is 45 and 1 with Rita Williams running this basketball team. She's a darn good player. Kelly Hunt picked up that foul, boxing out for the rebound, number 34 in blue, her first. But the lead is down to six. UConn trailed by as many as 17 in the first half. Jolly rejected, and Nikisha sails with a baseball pass to Abrasimova. The Huskies have their confidence back right now. They're playing smart and error-free basketball. Now through a double team. Count it and a foul. The All-America, Shamiqua Holtzclaw making the play again. You got to go to your big dog when you're having some problems. Here's the play before Abrasimova finishes on the other end off the steal. But Shamiqua Holzclaw 
came up big right now because that was a blocked shot off of Randall. Post gloss, 76% at the line, converts to three-point play. So right when you needed to stop a run, Shamiqua Holtzclaw makes a big-time play, and now the pressure leads to another turnover. Rita Williams let that one get off her shin. Well, the two things that happen for Tennessee, when Holtzclaw goes to the foul line, Tim, they're able to set the defense, Tennessee, and when Tennessee sets their defense, they're tough. Holtzclaw. Akeisha Sales comes out of there. Now it rocks him over with numbers. Oh, what an acrobatic play from Russia with love. And she might have been playing some street ball in St. Petersburg, Russia, because that is a sweet move right there. Wow, what touch on that shot. <laughs> playing smart defense right now. They're not allowing Tennessee to go around them. They're making them shoot over them. Shot clock had little down to three before they turned it over. What's a brought him over right here? Look at that hang time, but it's more the finesse and the finger roll on the shot. Oh, in an Olympic year, she should get more than two for that. And she's sending that tape back to her mom and dad so they can see it. That's a highlight tape. Difference in the second half for UConn, one turnover. At the half, they had 14. Sauer off the feet from Hunt. Good ball movement by UConn. 12 points in the game for Paige Sauer, the sophomore from Midwest City, Oklahoma, making a strong contribution. Three minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Jeter fell asleep, let that one get away, and UConn gets it back. This is as close as the Huskies have been since it was two to nothing. Oriyama's team making a point down here in Knoxville. Our game summary will tell you that UConn's just worked their way, almost willed their way back into this game. They've been out-rebounded by a huge number. Tennessee's turned it over seven times in the third quarter, and when UConn's had their opportunities, their ball movement has been outstanding. Well, look at the spacing right here on the court. Everybody kind of spreading out, and then watch the passing right here. They're going to get the ball to the high post. If the high post is denied right there by Stevens, they go inside with the give-and-go to Paige Sauer. That's a great read because they saw LaShonda Stevens teeting to the high post. UConn is 8 of 11 from the floor here in the third. Tennessee 3 of 10. And therein lies the reason they've come from 17 down and cut it to 3 with possession. Well, if you're not going to rebound, don't turn the ball over. Great work in traffic again. Abrasimova may have gotten away with an extra step, but she does get the deuce, and they're down one. This run is now up to 20 to 7 here in the third. Holtz clock. Out of bounds to UConn. They have a chance to shoot for the lead. It would be their first in this game on this possession. And you know, the difference in the second half is that UConn is making four and five passes and making Tennessee play defense and Tennessee is taking quick shots, and their players are not in rebounding position. 2.15 remained in the first half when Tennessee had its largest lead at 42 to 25. UConn will not even get a shot at it. They turn it over. And that was a big possession for UConn, but they still have their confidence rolling. 16 turnovers for the Huskies, but only their second in this half. So they have protected the ball far better since the intermission. But in the six previous meetings before, there has never been a blowout except last year, the game in Hartford, where UConn won 72-57. Jolly left wide open, and she makes them just that with a three-pointer. He's one of five today. But Kelly Jolly broke the back of UConn a year ago in the Midwest region. She had 19 points, and she hit some three key threes down the stretch. Sauer from the high post. A very good high-low post game going between Sauer and Kelly Hunt since coming into the game. Do not leave Kelly Jolly open. She shoots about 37%. If you give her that much time to set, 
Might as well put her in like one of those three-point shooting contests because that's what she does best. She's a set shooter. Make her shoot on the move. Out of Sparta, Tennessee, played in White County. Look at a great story with her tearing her ACL back in September last year and coming back and helping the Vols win the title game against Old Dominion. May have had another moving pick by Hansmeyer. We did. Second foul of that variety as uh, Jolly ran right into it. And the Volunteers get it back. Lady Vols up by four with 1.15 remaining here in the third quarter. You know why a player like Kelly Jolly, Tim, is out there on the court so much for Tennessee? She's a good player, even though she airballed that shot. She has a almost a three to one assist to turnover ratio. She gives you that leadership. Cross court pass is picked off by Holzclaw. And Thompson bowling erupts. You could really see the problem here. Well, see right here, you're not seeing the ball on defense, but she's going to turn around just in the nick of time. See right there, if you float the ball, Paige Sauer, you must look off your pass or ball fake because you want to get them leaning in the opposite direction. You set up Shamiqua Holtzclaw. UConn is shooting 56% in the game. One team this year has shot over 50 against Tennessee. That was Texas A&M up in Anchorage. 24,597, an all-time women's collegiate basketball record. Everybody left the Orange Bowl, got on a plane, and came to Thompson Bowl. And by the way, all of those Rocky Tops they couldn't get in in the second half in Miami, they're getting them in today. Fans can't believe they don't have another pick. And they may have lobbied their way into one. Well, that's probably coming from Pat Summit's book, Reach for the Summit. That comes out March 16th. See, that's right there. She's talking to the officials, making sure that they reverse that call. Uh, Sally Bell, Patty Broderick, and uh, John Morningstar getting it right. As does Holtzclaw. That's why they have All-Americans. Well, mark, mark down that turnover when they were down one. Makisha Sales can't hit. That took some of the steam out of UConn, it appears. That only opportunity they had for a lead, they never even got a shot off with that leading pick. Since then, Tennessee has been on a run. You're absolutely right. But doesn't this is mirror somewhat of the first half where Tennessee came out and took a big, big lead early, and then UConn settled down into their offense? But then the bench of Tennessee just wears you out their speed and quickness. Well, the athletic ability of the players on the floor in this game is such that you're going to have spurts, and uh, it has been a game of that this afternoon. Yeah, let's also talk about the fact that UConn graduated some pretty incredible players in Kara Walters, their 6'7 post, and also Carla Berube, one of their, I mean, I always thought that Carla was kind of the glue of the team. They're both playing in the ABL, but... You lose players like that, but you still get about 62% of your offense back with the players you see on the floor today. What's scary about Ariyama's team, as we mentioned at the top of the second half, with Shea Roth, how dangerous would they be? Tie ball with the arrow to Tennessee. I've been watching Shea Ralph on the bench for, ten, for uh, UConn, and I'm telling you, she is about ready to put the uniform on, take off the high heels, and get in there to play. She's just dying to play. Rita Williams checking Jolly. Nice pass to Jeter, does not convert, and is fouled on the way up by Hunt. Beautiful play, Jolly penetration, brings the defense, they rotate up to her, and she's able to, see right here, Sawa has to respect that Kelly Jolly might just finish to the hole, and then she dumps it down to Teresa Jeter. 
She came into this game with a total of 31 rejections. The tree, they call her, Teresa Jeter. Just a freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. A true force inside. And the quick hands along the perimeter and inside from LaShawn Stevens, that can really make a difference. Tennessee ended with a 7-0 run after Oriyama's team failed to get off a shot with a chance for its first lead. That's the end of the third, 56-48. CBS Sports coverage of women's college basketball will continue after these messages. An electric day in women's college basketball. Number one against number three. Two teams that have dominated the sport the last three years. Connecticut winning their title in 95, and then Tennessee with back-to-back -back titles in 96 and 97. There you see Tyler Summit, seven-year-old son, being held by R.B. Summit, the husband of the legendary Pat Summit. Well, you know, in my book, Tyler Summit is the MVP because he babysat my son TJ yesterday. <laughs> they went go-kart racing. They, he has more toys than any kid I've ever seen, and he loves his mama. Matter of fact, he was drawing plays up for his mom. I sort of felt like I babysat him earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> well, your name's Tim. His dad's name is Tim. It was kind of all in the family. Yeah, indeed. your defense on both sides. Holtzclaw picking up the foul. Abrasimova, again, it, you see the ease with which she handles the pressure that Holtzclaw gives her. We, we have not as yet seen her best, and uh, she's already very talented. Well, she's, she was MVP of the 1976 European Championship, so twice already she's been the Big East Rookie of the Year. She's not a rookie. <laughs> not at all. And a foul against Jeter. They're her third. And the sixth team foul against the Lady Vols. Don't forget tomorrow, a women's college basketball doubleheader. In game one, Colorado will meet Illinois. And then in game two, the Wisconsin Lady Badgers take on the Lady Bulldogs of Georgia. Or others may see Oregon against Stanford. Well, you're seeing the best in women's collegiate basketball. You get a chance to see Andy Landers with his two incredible freshmen, Coco Kelly Miller. Wisconsin with... Jane Albright Dieterly with her team with Katie Voigt. Kelly, Kelly Jolly picked up that foul on a reach. You know, I've seen Pat Summit mellow, mellow if it's that's hard to believe, over the years. She was an Olympic teammate of mine in 76. She has done everything. People don't realize she was a great player. Well, co-captain of that team. Co-captain of the 76 Olympic team in Montreal that won a silver medal. She knows what you're doing. She's gone through everything every one of her players has gone through, including an ACL. Duran gets them both to fall, 56-50. And Gino told us yesterday at practice, this team does not scare anybody. Well, I beg to differ. I think this UConn team does scare people. They might not have the, the cockiness of a Jamel Elliott or a Jen Rosati, and I say that in a positive way because they were such fierce competitors. Another steal, this one by Randall. Samika Randall, counted and a foul. Rita Williams picks up the personal. Just after Tennessee turned it over for a 20-second time, you could almost tell their, their eyes lit up. They were going to get another pick themselves. Well, you could see the speed and the quickness of Randall. See how she dribble penetrates against you? If you don't step up and cut her off, she's passing that ball to the wing. But she has such great athleticism, she can make the shot. You know, Timmy, let's not forget that she broke her thumb in the Arkansas game. Christy Smith, and uh, their, one of their players, bit Randall's thumb, and there's a huge gash in it. Didn't bite her on purpose, like Tyson. Makisha Sales can't hit. Out of bounds to Connecticut. Well, losing Rita Williams with 8.55 to play to foul difficulty does not help the UConn flight. No, it doesn't, because I think that Rita Williams has played a tremendous game on both ends of the court. 
Atlanta, Abramistova, trying to work in on Holzclaw. She's picking her up. Won't give and go, and Sales took an extra step. Gino Ariyama can't believe it. The choreography from him tells the story. But Gino, Gino has done a masterful job of getting his team, the Huskies, back into this ball game, keeping their confidence up, and just employing them to keep competing and not to be intimidated, one, by the crowd, and two, by the Lady Balls on the court. Catching, dumps it down to Holt's club. Tipped away, Kelly Hunt with a quick outlet to Abramis Bova. Taken away by catching. That was a big miss for the Huskies. Eight rebound of the day for catching. Off the ball, a clear out. And the foul against Amy Duran. Tonight on CBS. It's the series premiere of the Magnificent Seven, followed by Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all tonight on CBS. Gino Ariyama's team trailed 49-48 with 2-10 left in the third. They made a marvelous run. And then Stacy Hansmeyer got caught with a moving pick. And uh, since that time, his club's run has come to an end. And with that, Holtzclaw gives Tennessee another double-digit cushion. And it was Holtzclaw that raised the level of her game, as you say, after Hansmeyer turned the ball over. She was honored before the game as the USA Basketball's Female Athlete of the Year. Now, most people think she wears number 23 because of Michael Jordan. She doesn't. She wears it because it's the 23rd Psalm, which says, The Lord is my shepherd, I, my, I shall not want. And I don't really think she wants for a whole lot just to have fun and play this game. From Astoria, Queens, she is a legend in New York City. She has broken a few records, some of which I think uh, may be on the air today. <laughs> she made me seem like an yeah. old-timer. You know, it's funny because we had never met each other, but we had done a lot of interviews talking about each other. And when we first met three years ago, we looked at each other like, I know you. Yeah. And she certainly is a lot better than I will ever be or was. Well, you're being very humble. I can't say this. Uh, today, uh, our CBS sports crew has one Hall of Famer among us. Well, in Shreveport, you are a Hall of Famer back home. <laughs> and the girls, I mean, they love their dad. <laughs> Sauer trying to set up a pick for Durant, and she took an extra step. It's the defense. They make you do things you're not comfortable doing because they're always attacking and trapping. We've seen this. Look at that. Well, who's to say that you can't see 45 turnovers and it'd be entertaining? Now, nine of those turnovers in the last five minutes for Connecticut, and that's hurt them after clawing to within one point. We may have had our first three seconds. Violation. I mean, somebody stood still in the lane for five for three seconds. That's amazing. You, know, you don't normally see it in basketball any longer, particularly in a game with a pace of this. Nikisha Sales trying to make something happen. Duran. Duran again rejected by catching. She stays with it and puts it down. And Hope Claw hurt her cap. In the corner against Duran, she was contesting the shot. That's why she wasn't able to box out Amy Duran as she follows her shot. Kyra Elsie will come in for her. Watch this right here. That shot goes up, and I don't know if you can see it, but that's Holtzclaw in the corner, and she's been motioning to the bench to pat some and to get her out. But do not fear. One of the best trainers in college basketball and Jenny Moshak is working on her. You mentioned the accolades uh, to be honored uh, on the 12th of January at the 21st Annual Collegiate Women Athlete of the Year Banquet in Atlanta. Side of the 98th convention, she's also one of 10 finalists for the James E. Sullivan Memorial Award. Uh, let me throw another one at you. She's a finalist for the Honda Award, the Honda Broderick Cup. Highly decorated and now 
is being uh, taken care of as uh, Schumacher picks up that foul for UConn. Samika Randu at the free throw line. Eleven points and seven rebounds for Samika. Well, one of the big differences in the game against UConn has been that they've only taken 37 shots. Tennessee's taken 51 shots. When you have that many more possessions and you're a good offensive team. <laughs> Boy, Abrasimova has had some marvelous scoops to the hoop today. Well, you said it. She's got a nice, nice game. And she's going to be fun. What, can you imagine, like, when she's a junior or senior and she mm. learns the game? We're told, by the way, uh, Holstlaw has suffering from a calf cramp. She should be okay. Abrasimova on the other end picked up the foul. She appears to be ready to get back in as soon as possible there with uh, Mickey DeMoss. But what a staff uh, has been assembled here. Holly Warlick, Al Brown, and you, you mentioned uh, Al Brown, one of the assistants for Pat Summer. There's Holly and... That's and Mickey there. Mickey DeMoss, a great player from Louisiana Tech. Holly Warlick was an Olympian. She's the most decorated player Tennessee's ever had. I think she's a future Hall of Famer. And Al Brown, I call him Mr. Video. He just breaks down the films. He's always giving the scouting report. There's a great combination. I mean, Holly and Mickey have been with Pat for 13 years. Al's been a head coach in men's, men's basketball. He's been to the Final Four in the men's game and the women's game. Abrasimova. Oh, the iron unkind to Connecticut. But a foul underneath. Schumacher was taking it back to the hoop in Jeter's face, and Teresa Jeter comes away with her fourth foul. So now she joins Rita Williams of UConn as the players are suffering with foul difficulty. Uh, Al, the silver fox there, coach for Clem the Gym at uh, Minnesota not long ago. Came over with Wade Houston, and then subsequently when Houston was fired, Pat Summit picked him up and uh, has done a marvelous job. Oh, absolutely. He's the, the voice of reason on the bench. And on the other side, maybe after the break, we'll talk about the assistant coaches with UConn. 64-56, 5-56 remaining. <laughs> Comedy when Team Cosby takes on the women of the WNBA. Now let's see what you got. <laughs> you got nothing. All new Cosby CBS Monday. This CBS Sports Women's Basketball Classic is presented by American Honda, saluting collegiate women athletes for their hard work and dedication. And by Head and Shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. We mentioned at the very top of our show today that, that this was a basketball team, this Tennessee team made up of uh, the three Meeks and how effective they could be. They certainly have been that today. They have gone above and beyond the call of duty, as you see right here. That's what they did do during the season. That's pretty spectacular today, and they had to give that quality against UConn. And they fought off a lot of defensive pressure in this game. Foul against uh, Nikisha Sales, her third. Nikisha has been uh, reduced to a role player today by Tennessee's suffocating defense of her. And pretty obvious that that summit made the decision if uh, they were going to lose the game, it would not be because Nikisha Sales had a big afternoon. Well, it's been defense by committee. It started out with Holtzclaw doing a fine job against Sales early in the first quarter. Then LG picked her up. Then Randall. And then even Ketchings had a chance to guard her some. And they've been very effective. She's 2 out of 10 with only 4 points on the day. Coming in averaging 20.4. Now she's trapped. She gets it out to Duran. When you break the press, pass it to the middle, get on the vertical. Send that ball to the corner. Well, you could sense the frustration even after that make by Sales. 66 to 58. Again, a tremendous move by Samika Randall. 
when you have players that can break you down one on one. That's where the game, the women's basketball game is going to. Players that can take you one on one when they have the opportunity. Rita Williams, not enough spacing there to make that pass to Schumacher. Tennessee with a 10-point lead looking for more. Well, all Tennessee has to do right now, Timmy, is milk the clock. It's a little bit of court management by Kelly Jones. <laughs> Dead ball. Spacing. Don't let the defense double team you. Reach in against Atlanta Abram Robert Smova. Abrasimova now with four fouls. So both she and uh, Rita Williams play with four. And just over four minutes to play. 4.36 remaining in our game. Tamika Ketchings goes to the line more than any other lady ball. She goes about five times a game because she's so aggressive to the hoop. You know, a funny story about her, Tim, is that I was making a reservation the other day for a flight. And I call the airline, and the lady books my flight, and she says, are you Nancy Lieberman Klein? I'm like, well, yeah. She says, my daughter is Tamika Ketchings. <laughs> And I'm thinking of the 2,000 operators that I could get on the 800 number. I get Wanda Ketchings, and she took the job at the airline so she could get the flight benefits to go see Taja and Tamika play because, you know, one's in Illinois, one's down here in Tennessee. I mean, isn't that just kind of crazy? Yeah. Well, her, her daughter's turning into double platinum as a basketball player. Whether she gets the miles or not. And she picks up the foul. All smiles for Mother Wanda, who no doubt is uh, getting a good look at her today. Thompson Bowling Arena with a record crowd of 24,575 with Nancy Lieberman Klein. Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. The Women's Basketball Classic presented by Honda. Number one, Tennessee. Number three, UConn. Catching sits down. Abbasimova misses. Samika Randall pulls up. The lead back to 14. Randall with 17 on the day. Duran, that's an extra step. Well, you have to feel that Holtz Claw is kind of lurking around, and that's what made her travel. Tonight on CBS, it's the season premiere of the Magnificent Seven, followed by Walker, Texas Ranger. All tonight on CBS. There's the duck down to Jeter. Sauer's been very effective defensively. I love the way Paige Sauer plays, and she's only a sophomore. She's going to be in the long line of great UConn post with Rebecca who really changed the game at being six foot four and being able to run the perimeter and shoot from out there. And then Kara Walters, and now you have Paige Sauer. Teresa Jeter's just fouled out. Her fifth, as Rita Williams took it to the glass. She ends the day five points, six boards, three blocks. That gets her up to 34 rejections on the year. Averaging two and a half per game. And uh, she's done nothing to hurt that stat. And her sister in crime, Tamika Ketchings, is second in the conference. She averages 2.2 blocks. So Tennessee, although they're relatively small in the middle, they're very effective. Speaking of conference play, Tennessee dismantled Arkansas on New Year's night by 30. Now that's a top 25 team. Once again, the balance of power in women's college basketball can be found in the Southeastern Conference. What about the great game that Old Dominion had down in Lubbock the other day? Down 18 points at the beginning of the second half against Texas Tech, who was number six in the nation. And Old Dominion comes back and wins by four. A huge win on the road for them. I can't wait to see the Old Dominion-Tennessee game. All that being said, everyone's trying to dodge. Either Tennessee, Old Dominion, Louisiana Tech, or Yukon in their particular region. And again, a second chance for Tennessee. Sauer knocking it away with Randall's attempt. 
physical play underneath, but six foot five going up against five foot ten, and normally the six five will win. She has five blocks today. Both page side. Randall running down the loose ball, but Rita Williams comes away with it. Well, for Tennessee, they don't want to foul and stop the clock. They just want to make UConn use that 30 second shot clock. There's another tie ball. Possession arrow to the Volunteers, the Lady Vols. So much happening in women's college basketball. We were talking amongst ourselves, Louisiana Tech with Leon Barmore. He has five returning starters from last year's team, uh, a perennial Final Four team. You look around the country, you know, you mentioned uh, Old Dominion. Stanford could very easily be hanging around come tournament time. They get Kristen Fokel back, who just came off the volleyball championship with Stanford. And so many more teams are better now than they were 10 years ago. Well, there's so many it's, great players yeah. at the high school level, and they're not just going to UConn or Tennessee. They're going to Texas a &M. They're going to Maine. They're going to a lot of other schools. Look at Florida International. They're in the top 25. Look at what Joan Bombancini's done at Arizona. I mean, they're having a career year. Timeout, Lady Vols. They lead by a baker's dozen at home. And a 20-second timeout. Speaking of more women's college basketball, we've got it for you here on CBS Sports tomorrow. It's a doubleheader in game one. Colorado Badgers take on Georgia, or Oregon faces Stanford. Back with more after this. I believe that if you really go out and do exactly what you want to do. I'm Paula Zahn. Michael Kennedy is laid to rest outside Boston. And marathon balloonist Steve Fawcett, will he or won't he fly over Libya? On tonight's CBS Evening News. 220 and counting here in the fourth quarter with Nancy Lieberman, Klein, Tim Brando here at Thompson Bowling Arena. Number one, Tennessee, leading number three, UConn. Tennessee just trying to spread the court right now. They don't need a quick shot. Randall will take it. Duran tries to run it down. Look out. Catchings comes up with it. Every loose ball, and uh, the board work has been astounding by this Tennessee team. They average about 11 more rebounds a game than their opponents. That is something that Pat Summit just drills into her players. It doesn't matter if they're Olympians or what. Rebound. You must rebound and play defense. Look at that. 20 to 7 for Tennessee. For all the latest news and stats on women's college basketball, click on to cbs.sportsline.com. Svetlana Abrasimova has fouled out, picking up her fifth. And so now Gino Auriemma taking some time to get in the replacement and give some instructions in so doing. Kelly Hunt will check in. And uh, Svetlana put on a show. She she ends this game with four. She has. She's she's a competitor. She's mentally very tough. Um, we could not have made it last year to a championship without Kelly Jolly, and she's leading us in that direction. Hopefully, once again. Bob. And Jolly led you to South Carolina for a big SEC game. You, anytime you go on the road in this conference, you got to be a little weary. Well, you, you wonder what you're going to do coming off of our UConn game, but I, I want to make a note here of one statistic I'm really proud of for Kelly as well as for our team. She plays in the UConn game and the South Carolina game, plays a lot of minutes, has zero turnover. Uh, that says a lot about her seriousness on offense and, and her ability to lead our basketball team and take care of the ball, and we played an up-tempo. Pat, you don't really care if Jolly scores that much, do you? No, but I think there'll be games that she'll have to look to score, and when, when you need her to play that role, take the Wisconsin game, she hits those three threes um, uh, almost back-to-back -back and just uh, breaks the game open. So she understands her role and knows when she has to, to look to score. Yeah, the one thing she does so well for is gets you into the offense. She does, and right there, she, she runs our, our two-man option against um, South Carolina's man-to-man -man defense where Tamika and Shamika really play together, and Hosequaw goes in, scores on the block. Pat, how much of your offense and defense is in right now, percentage-wise, would you guess? Oh, I think, uh, I think we have probably 75% of what we want to do. We want to be able, obviously, to do them all better. Uh, certainly, you, you'd like to add 
a few new wrinkles along the way, both offensively and defensively. And I think um, we're not as strong defensively in our half court game as we need to be, but yet we went ahead and put in another zone, so you add some things. You know, a lot of coaches this time of the year are concerned if freshmen can find their way from the gym back to the dorm and back. <laughs> I mean, your freshmen have really stepped it up. Well, they're not your typical freshmen. I mean, look at Samika Randall right there on the baseline move, getting inside the defense, which she does so well. This, this freshman class, they've had a lot of experience. They're all from championship backgrounds. They played internationally with the exception of Teresa Jeter, and, so she certainly is, is, she's growing up every day and making great strides. So we've not treated them like freshmen. And There's Teresa right there, back hometown. Oh, Columbia. hometown, nice pass, uh, good layup. Uh, Samika Randall starting starting to finish her layup. So Teresa Jeter's dad, I think, purchased 200 tickets. And uh, <laughs> she had all of her family and friends, her own cheering section. Uh, they need to come to Knoxville some, Bob. I like yeah. it. Right here, uh, we're on offense, Kelly Jolly. Uh, uh, gets us into our offense, uh, Jeter on the inside along with catchings. Um, that, that gives us great quickness, not as much size as we're accustomed to, but I like the quickness there. There's uh, Jolly from the corner, uh, nice board. Priest again, very active on the inside, and she had 10 rebounds that night. Yeah, so. I was going to say, how much better is Jeter getting? She's getting a lot better. I think the thing uh, offensively now is that, that she developed some consistency and also that uh, we can count on her defensive intensity on the inside when we play someone like, say, Florida coming up here. Pat, are you getting more into a rotation now? I mean, do you have it kind of figured out at the five-minute mark you're going to go with such and such? You do have, um, I, I think you have a pretty good feel, and our staff understands, our team understands now. Um, we've, we've met, we've talked about individual roles. Probably Kristen Clement's the only one that uh, we've not been able to get she and Kelly into the type of rotation that I think eventually we will get to. And, and great boards there by Shaniqua. Uh, nice work on the weak side. A, a point of emphasis for us in practice has been weak side rebounding. Once Kristen gets um, her game where I, I think she'll have it, hopefully here in the next couple weeks, and I think we'll have a rotation set there as well. Of course, she's still coming back from injury, getting into game shape, but she looks like she's getting better every game. Well, this was a this was her best uh, game as far as I'm concerned on the defensive end. And, you know, when you're struggling sometimes offensively, you can put too much emphasis on offense, and I thought her defensive intensity was the best it's been. And there's catchings getting inside, and you get a lot of weapons. Well, that's the difference, I think, from last year to this year. One of the biggest changes, uh, certainly uh, the quickness is, um, is much better in, the, in our speed overall, which gives us good depth. But I, I think just to have, when Shamik was being defended with denial pressure and being trapped, that you do have other people that can step up on the offensive end and make plays. He's Clement and Jolly in the game at the same time now. Played them together some. Um, really wanted to do that. Um, I, I think that it gives us the outside three-point threat from both wings. Uh, and when South Carolina went to their zone, then we went with both guards in the lineup. How do you determine who's the point and who's the second guard? We just, uh, it depends on the rebound and whoever touches. One releases uh, the uh, down court and the other takes the ball and brings it up. And, and they seem to get a good feel for that, what we want to do. That's got to give defenses a problem, too, because they're not sure exactly how to set up their defense. Well, I think it's helped us. It's helped us that Tamika Catchings and Tamika Randall and Kyra Elsey can bring the ball up the floor, and so can Shamika. So we, we have um, definitely a, a chance to make a difference in how people defend us and uh, to really keep teams off guard. And here you settle into the half-court defense. How's that coming for you? Well, it's it's uh, it's getting better. Our help side has been really uh, really lacking, and we're entirely too tight to our players and not really guarding the basketball early enough. But you know, Bob, I, there's always something I'm going to be <laughs> looking for and complaining about and trying to teach. And uh, definitely, help side defense has been been on my practice sheet every day. In this game, you took pretty good shots. Jolly open for the three and drills. Well, we, we had good shot selection overall. And again, I, I think it was one of our, our better games, particularly a good game in a back-to-back -back game situation. And, and I like the intensity of our basketball team. Tennessee One's on the road at South Carolina, 92-54. Coming up, Florida at the arena. We'll talk about that game when we return on the Pat Summit Show. It's time now for a Lady Vol Spotlight. At the beginning of the Lady Vol basketball season, Shamiqua Holtzclaw had just about done it all in women's college hoops. 
She's won two national championships, she's a two-time All-American, and she was named the most valuable player at last year's Final Four. Last Saturday, she added one more accomplishment to that impressive list. She led her team to their first regular season and home victory over the University of Connecticut. It, it, it felt really good because obviously like during a regular season they've kind of owned us and you know they had our number and we're the team that always comes back to beat them in the, um, the big game but it was good to finally go out there and beat them during a regular season. Shamiqua's performance which included 25 points and five rebounds earned her SEC player of the week honors. Shamiqua was happy with the win but says there is more to come from the Lady Vols. I mean this team is good and I don't want to seem cocky or anything but we can be that much more better. We definitely have tremendous athletic ability, and we're really coming together right now and knowing how each other plays, and we're only going to get better. I always say Coach Summit just doesn't recruit great basketball players. She recruits great people, and we all get along. I mean, we hang with each other off the court, and I just think that that carries on over the court because we have a good feel for each other. I think with this team this year, you really don't have to motivate. Everybody wants to win. Everybody's committed because no one wants to be in that situation we were in last year, so everybody's really focused. Being focused is the key to an unprecedented third straight national title for the Lady Vols, and the strategy is simple. I think we take it one game at a time, but our long-term goal, we all know, is to um, get to that championship game, and we're kind of just preparing ourselves along right now. So will it be three in a row for the Lady Vols? With Shamiqua at the helm, I wouldn't bet against them. For the Pat Summit Show, I'm Mendy McMurtry. Shamika, of course, the premier player in women's basketball. Can she get better? She can, Bob. That's an interesting uh, question there because you think, how can she improve what's left for Shamiqua? But I think defensively, we're seeing improvement. I think consistency in terms of her ball handling, and we want to get those turnovers down. But she can be a better basketball player than she is now. And that's scary. Yeah, it is. And she's always been a good leader, too. Oh, uh, she's really, uh, she's led by example, and now she's more vocal, and that'll make a difference. She's really uh, helped Kelly. She's been great with our freshman class. I'm just, just glad she's in orange. You got that right. She's a very special player, Shamika Holsclaw. When we come back, we'll take a look at the highlights from the Lady Vols and South Carolina here on the Pat Summit. See out of Washington. Join us next week for the ABL All-Star Game as Teresa Edwards and Dawn Staley lead the East against Natalie Williams and Jennifer Azy from the West. That game is Sunday, January 18th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll also have highlights of a three-point shootout and the dunk contest. For Debbie Antonelli and our entire Foxnet sports crew, I'm Tracy Warren saying so long from Seattle, Washington. We hope you'll join us next week for the ABL All-Star Game in Orlando, Florida.